Hi YouTube, I'm Evan, and welcome back to one of my auto repair videos. Today I'm going to show you how to remove and replace the coolant switch on a 2003-2007 Honda Accord. Now the temperature switch is found down below under the left side fan and it's connected to that wire over there that you can see. There are two ways to get to the uh, coolant switch and there's top and bottom. From the bottom you have to jack the car up and remove the shield. Uh, some of the shield just enough to get to it. So let me show you However from the top uh, It's much easier. All you have to do is remove the fan shroud. So today we're going to show you how to get to it from the top Removing the fan shroud is very simple and easy. There are a few bolts here. You have to unscrew this one two three a few hoses You have to disconnect one two and a few uh, plugs that you need to connect one two here and three here There's a few plug connectors that you might have to tilt the fan shroud in order to take them out and finally, there is this part right here that you might have to remove in order to slide it up. Before you uh, take everything out, you might want to drain your radiator first and it's right, the drain plug's right there. We already drained it anyway, so we're going to get to it right now. We're going to take our Milwaukee cordless ratchet and unscrew the bolts. Make sure it's, it's spinning in the right direction. I think next I'm gonna deal with the hoses. So this one, you can just remove it easily. You just have to wiggle it. Now for this one, you need pliers to undo the clamp. I don't think we put it there. So we have pliers right here. I'm not gonna put the clamp all the way. So I'll just get as much as I can. So I'll try the bigger pliers. Hopefully that works out. I don't wanna lock it just yet because it's really hard to unlock it, but maybe we have to. Uh, that's all right. Oh, it locked anyway, so just slide that down here. Just slide it as much as you can so that you can wiggle the thing off, the wiggle the hose off. So now we can wiggle the hose off. There might be some coolant coming out, so you might want to put a drain pan. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you can see it, but we have a drain pan down there. Just the red thing. So we're going to wiggle it out. We're going to try to stuff it back here so it's out of the way. The final ones are the final little step is to remove the uh, wires. So they're really easy to unsnap. So there, you press on this, and it should be able to pull them apart. On this side, you have to unsnap this one. So easy as one, two, three. And usually it's like in this mount, so you might have to pull it out, but that's all right since ours was separated. And down here, it doesn't look like there is one. So we're going to do the final step and remove this. So this one's really easy. All you have to do is like either take it out by hand or use pliers to remove the fastener right here. There are two of them. So. Alright, perhaps a better tool for this would be a pry bar, since it looks like these fasteners are meant to be pried out. So just try to stick it under and remove it. So the way it comes out is you slide it up and it goes over this sort of uh, hose right here. So, or wire. You want to slide it up carefully. Make sure you don't lose the fasteners either. I'm going to put that there for now. I think... We're good, so now we should be able to lift it out. Let's hope we did everything. Some things might get caught, so you might have to finagle it a bit. But in the end, you should be able to take it out fairly simply. 
Here is the temperature sensor. It's to the left of this big hose here. And it was blocked by a fan trout earlier, so you can see it. But now we can get to it and remove it. So the way to remove it is there's a clip right here that you have to press down on in order to release it. And now you can just plug it out. Uh, remember that when you're taking out the temperature sensor, uh, uh, the next step after this, is you wanna, you definitely wanna drain the coolant because you'll see that there's a hole that's basically a coolant. So you wanna take a deep socket like this. This is a 24, or according to my dad, three fours. And you wanna slip it over. We're using a ratchet wrench for this. And just take it out. Make sure I slip it on. All right, so if it doesn't ratchet anymore, that means it's already loose. So I guess my dad took it out earlier. So we're just going to take it out with using hand. And that's what it looks like. So looks like we have a new part right here. And that's what they look like side by side. Now then, what I said earlier about making sure you drain the coolant is if you look down here, you can see that it's basically just a big hole. And that's why you need to drain the uh, coolant. All right, so we tested the uh, temperature sensor from this car and it works. Now, if you want to learn how to te uh, test the temperature sensor, I'll show you a bit of the video. This one has a zero resistance now, but I actually done a full video on this, so you can go check that out if you want to. But we're going to put this temperature sensor uh, in the car instead of the new one that we have, which is right here. So this is not a genuine part. Uh, so I guess in the end it's actually better because my dad actually likes the genuine parts even if they are used. So we're going to put this back in and I guess putting it, ba uh, installing it is the same as removing it just in reverse like always. So there's a o-ring on the uh, temperature sensor so you don't have to worry about over tightening it uh, just like it is with the drain plug. So the uh, temperature sensor, Wait, where's my flashlight? Uh, I want to make sure you guys can see this. All right, so now we're going to screw it in. So, screw it in as far as you can with your hands. Uh, I'm pretty sure you might not have to use a socket wrench for this, uh, but I'm just going to use it anyway to make sure that's in. Okay. So I shouldn't have to tighten it that much, especially since you don't have to over torque it because of the o-ring. All right, so it's already tight. One thing I want to mention is that we thought that the temperature sensor wasn't working because when we tested it outside without heating it up, uh, there was no current flowing. And in the end, we, th we concluded that it must have been an on and off thing, so something related to temperature. So when the temperature sensor is heated up, that's when it turns on and uh, current can flow through it. Next step is to put the uh, cable back on. So it's uh, easy as Put it, snapping it on make sure it clicks so that means it's it indicates that's locked on and to uh, spin the drain so that it's tightened and in this vertical position for us that indicates that it's tight enough so i can't tighten it even further all right so next up is putting the fan shroud back and it's just the reverse process of removing it so it probably won't show too much we'll probably just fast forward through it but we'll see so just take that back up slide it in there okay always the scariest part of putting your fan back I guess we'll put the bolts in first maybe so I'll put the middle one first tighten it as far as I can with my hands then we'll go over it later with the Milwaukee but that comes later at the end I'll tighten everything instead of right now probably hey what's up Okay, now I'll tighten that later, but I'll put the plugs back in. You can tell which way they are connected by the clips. On this side, they also have the wire that you have to connect, and they go together the same way. Make sure that they're the same side. 
Okay, next step is the hoses and I'm missing something and the mount. All right, so this one goes on easily. No, no, no finagling needed. This one might be a bit harder, but since the, the clamp's already down there, we don't have to worry too much. All right, so we take our uh, pliers. the clamp over I guess you don't have to do this but it probably be best to put it in the spot where it was before so make sure that the it's in its um, indent that it forms next up we're going to put the fasteners back in so this one is missing its fastener so we have a zip tie fastener here to replace it so the way it works is that from this angle, you can actually see where the zip tie is supposed to go in. The reason we have these fasteners is so that the wires do not go into the uh, fan when it's running. If it did, that would be pretty bad. All right. I think I'll get it as tight as I can. Next step is to put the, I don't know what this part is called still, uh, but we're going to put it back on. So it's, so this U, this U shaped hole is cut out. It goes onto this um, bolt right here. It has a sort of a groove where it fits on. So we're just going to slide it on. All right, and it, as you can see, it fits perfectly. Now we're going to put these fasteners back on. They, they can just be uh, snapped in. Might take a lot of force. Uh, one thing I want to mention, uh, a lot of mechanics definitely do this, is you should definitely disconnect the battery before you do this. Uh, we didn't do it, but as a precaution, uh, especially for safety reasons, you should definitely work with, uh, with the battery disconnected. Alright, next step is to refill the coolant. Now, since we still have a bit more diagnosings to do, we're going to uh, put in water instead. Wait, this isn't water. Uh, but. <laughs> Um, especially if you live in the northeastern area of the U.S. or in areas where there's a cold winter, you want to make sure that you replace that water with coolant because if you still have water in there during the cold winter, it's going to freeze up and it's going to make your radiator burst or it's going to make it uh, corrode. So definitely make sure to replace the water with coolant. So we're going to refill it and first we want to refill the radiator and the way to do that is you have to open the cap. To open the radiator cap, you need to put pressure on it and then twist it. Now, I don't know exactly when it comes out. All right, so it comes out, uh, and as you can see, you need to put pressure on it in order to open it when you turn it. So you don't have to use a funnel, but it certainly makes it easier to use a funnel. We're going to put it down there. And I remember last time I did this, I was a bit careful with how much I poured, but we don't need to worry about a spill. It's just water, so. After that, you should refill the um, overflow reservoir tank. And after, uh, we still have a bit of diagnosing to do, so we're not gonna do that right now. But after we finish everything, we're probably gonna replace the water uh, coolant. And I think that's everything I need to show you. I my mind, and I just showed you how to remove and replace the temperature sensor for our 2003 to 2008 Honda Accord. Now, it should be the same for any other car. Um, but I really like making these uh, videos because you know, whenever we have these really hard problems, uh, my dad always looks to the internet, especially YouTube, to find out the sources of problems, and sometimes he doesn't find an answer. So when we find an answer to them, we want to be able to uh, share them and to help people who also have the same problem. So thanks for watching. Please like, rate, comment, subscribe, and look at our videos on I and I Month, uh, uh, especially the auto repair videos. Uh, leave a like if it helped you. Uh, leave a dislike if it didn't help you. I mean, no hard feelings. Uh, and. Uh, I guess we're done here. It's actually nighttime right now. So uh, Mechanic Imon signing out. Peace.